Christ has broken down the wall. Christ has broken down the wall. Let us join our hearts as one. Christ has broken down the wall. We accepted as we are we're accepted as we are through God's love all is reconciled we're accepted as we are cast aside your doubts and fears cast aside your doubts and fears peace and love freely offered here cast aside your doubts and fears we will tear down the walls we will tear down every wall God has called us one and all Christ has broken down the wall Christ has broken down the wall Would you please rise and join us in our processional hymn Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise ye, alleluia. Oh, brother, sun with golden beam. Oh, sister, moon with silver gleam. Oh, praise ye, oh, Good morning. 
My name is Myra Hewitt. I'm so blessed and happy to be worshiping you with you this morning. A few announcements before we get started. This is the last day of Sunday school until fall. Vacation Bible School will start June 14th, so you can register your child online or you can call the office. And if you would like to volunteer to help with Vacation Bible School, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Thank you to the donors of the changing tables for our nursery. And we will have staff childcare. It will continue um, for the contemporary service that begins at 10 o'clock for infants through four years old. Wednesday is the last day for the middle school and high school fuse children. Remember to buy a cookbook that they're selling. All of those proceeds will go to their mission trip. By the way, the Fuse Lounge Refrigerator has stopped, and if anyone has an extra one or knows of one, it would be very nice if you could donate to, to that purpose. One of the things that we are encountering as we're opening up our normal operations of the church, your service is needed. If you're interested in volunteering in worship as an usher, a greeter, a reader, or a tech operator, and I'm assured they will train you, contact Sherry Zones or Zach. And now, if you would please stand and let's greet each other with our wave, turn to the camera, and greet those people who are viewing us today online. Please stay standing and join me in our opening prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have called us to be your people. We thank you that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you make us one with Christ. Help us to understand the meaning of faith and trust. Help us to know that you are the foundation of our faith. Amen. Please remain standing and as we sing our opening song, I was there to hear your morning cry. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. If the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been 
with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your light unfold. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from Psalm 98, verses 1 through 9 from the Common English Bible. Singing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wondrous things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast. Shout triumphantly before the Lord the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud together before the Lord, because he is coming to establish justice on the earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, and I want to share in a gospel reading uh, from 1 John, actually it's an epistle reading, 1 John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Whoever loves someone who is a, is a parent loves the child born to the parent. This is how we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep God's commandments. This is the love of God. We keep God's commandments. God's commandments are not difficult because everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has, been, has defeated the world, our faith. Who defeats the world? Isn't it the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's good to see you on this uh, Sunday morning as we uh, share together on this Mother's Day. Uh, happy Mother's Day, and uh, it's a blessing to... Uh, uh, be able to honor uh, uh, members of our congregation who, who parent, uh, moms, dads, uh, aunts, uncles, grandparents who, uh, who uh, work uh, uh, in helping raise our kids. I'm also always thankful for our Sunday school teachers who, uh, who help our children to learn about, uh, learn about the faith. Um, as we share together today, um, First John tells us... Um, about the kind of love that, that God has for us and about how we know our faith. Um, 1 John, not to be confused with the Gospel of John, uh, 1 John uh, is back towards the back of the New Testament, uh, right before, well, there's 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and then Jude, if you decide you want to uh, peruse through the, the epistles of John. They're a, a smaller set of writings, uh, but uh, they, they have some really neat pithy, to-the-point statements about the gospel, which really tell us um, uh, what, what we're experiencing in the gospel and how God's love works in our lives. So, I titled my sermon, How Do You Know You're a Christian? How do you know 
you're a Christian. Well, some people might say you know a, that you're a Christian because you can recite back uh, to uh, your pastor or your confirmation leader the Apostles' Creed or the, or the Creed of, of Nicaea or, or uh, uh, being really humorous here as United Methodists that you can actually tell, tell us what the doctrinal standards are of the United Methodist Church found in the Book of Discipline. Not many of us can probably do that. But that's really descriptors that we use to talk about our faith. The creeds describe the nuts and bolts of our faith, the way our faith is constructed, but they don't really tell us what that faith is about. It's it's kind of like reading about relationship. Um... When I was in college, I was a, one of my majors was psychology. I double majored in psychology and biblical studies. I thought psychology might help me understand people better, and I think in some ways it does. Um, but also, um, psychology gives you nuts and bolts about how people behave and their relationships. So actually, one of the classes, for example, I took was a class on marriage and family. I was a single adult at the time, had not been married when I took the class, and was, we, we studied about marriage. We studied about marriage. Well, as someone who has been married now for quite a few years, I can tell you that reading about marriage is not at all the same as being married. It's not at all the same as, as living out the day-to-day relationship with another person. That's the way actually all relationships are, whether it's a marriage relationship, parental relationships, relationships between friends, uh, between people you're close to. You can talk about what the elements of a relationship are, uh, you know, caring for each other, being concerned for the other, but that's not the same thing as the experience of the relationship. John Wesley, who was one of the founders of of, uh, Methodism, Um, was an Anglican priest, uh, Church of England, Church of England. And um, from Wesley's preaching and teaching and his many sermons, and he wrote hundreds of sermons, um, we distilled out of those some priorities that that Wesley preached about. Um, And in fact, a a, a pretty famous Methodist historian, Albert Outler, coined the the term the Wesleyan quadrilateral, the Wesleyan quadrilateral. In the Wesleyan quadrilateral, um, you have scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. Now, if you look at the teachings of Wesley's church, the Church of England, they actually emphasized officially three of those, scripture, tradition, reason. That's really great. Scripture is very important, tells us about Jesus, tells us about the love of God. Um, uh, Tradition tells us what the church has done in the past, how the church operates, how we do things together, what decisions we've made. Scripture, tradition, reason, very important. Uh, it's, it's hardly from God if it's not reasonable, if it, if it doesn't make sense, and we get reason and our ability to think from God. But Wesley added a fourth one. Experience. Experience. You see, our relationship with God is based on our experience our own experiences with God. And so, how do you know you're a Christian? How do you know what it means to be a Christian? Well, John in the epistle, the the, uh, chapter 5 says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ and has been born, uh, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Let me read that sentence again because it's clear not complicated. Everyone who believes, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, God's anointed one, God's Messiah, 
has been born from God. So actually, when you get right down to the very root, the very heart of what it is to be a Christian, it is about what it means simply that we have faith in God through Jesus Christ. The nuts and bolts of the faith, like what specific things we believe, um, uh, uh, you know, doctrinal statements, faith statements are great. They're guides to help us understand and to live our Christian life. But that's not what makes you a Christian. That's not what makes you a Christian. Any more than you are a car because you're standing in a garage. Just knowing the nuts and bolts or even just being at church, or just memorizing something, knowing something in your head isn't what makes you a Christian. It is that you are seeking a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It does not mean that you have to know everything about your faith. It doesn't mean you have to understand everything about faith. I think that's true of any relationship as well that we have with a person None of us would probably say that we fully understand our spouse or that we fully understand our children or that we fully understand any other person because they have their own mind, their own thoughts, their own, their, the th things that are important to them. And even someone you've known for years can surprise you sometimes because they are their own person. And in relationship, you develop you develop the real connection that makes it important. I do weddings, and I've done a few weddings during the pandemic, though most of them moved outside. Uh, and um, in doing weddings, one of the last things we do is we get together and we sign a piece of paper from the government that says you're married. Now, while legally that's the most important part of the ceremony, in fact, legally, I could just pull the couple aside and, and a set of witnesses and just fill out the certificate and give it to them and tell them they're done. Legally, I could do that. That's not actually what, the, what, a, what is the most important part of the, of the marriage ceremony. The most important part is the relationship that has developed and is beginning and blossoming and developing in this couple's life. And the wedding is a formalization, a formalization of the relationship that already exists. It's a way for people to publicly say, I'm in this relationship together. So as Christians, it begins with the very simple statement that I believe in God and I believe that Jesus is God's Son. So that's why our children, who, who, uh, who have already been marked by the seal of Christ through baptism, are already part of the Christian faith. Not because they already understand it all. In fact, your pastor would be lying to you if I said I understood everything about the Christian faith. But I have a relationship, you have a relationship, our children have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It's the relationship that makes you a Christian. It's the relationship. And so be careful. Be careful. Um, I know I run into people every once in a while who will tell you that you had to have come to that relationship in an exact certain way. There are folks out there, for example, with a kind of a conversion theology idea, which says that unless you can name the exact day and time and location that you became a Christian, then you're not a Christian. I would encourage them to find a scripture that says that somewhere because it actually doesn't. Many of you grew up in the church. You have always believed in Jesus. You uh, were baptized as an infant in this congregation or another, and you have always been a part of the Christian faith, and your faith is just as valid as someone who becomes a Christian as a young person, as a, as a, as a middle-aged person, as an older adult. Each of our relationships begins differently based on who we are. Our own personal experiences with God, our own personal experiences with the church, we 
we have that relationship with God. And so very simply, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're a Christian. You're a Christian. The scripture also says that we, we are a Christian, and part of being a Christian is remembering that the most important thing about the Christian faith is love. It's love. This is how we know that we love the children of God, it says. When we love God and keep his commandments, this is the love of God. And skipping on down, everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has defeated the world, our faith. And then the last verse I read to you, the one who came by water and blood, that's through through his life, birth, death, resurrection, Jesus Christ is the one who testifies and is the spirit, has the spirit of truth. And so the, the, most fundamental, the most fundamental attribute of any really good relationship is love. Is love. English is a poor language when it comes to talking about love. I'm sure you've heard other pastors tell you this. Um, but the original language in the New Testament is Koine Greek. Koine is, is common Greek, street Greek. And Greek is a language which has multiple words for love because there's different kinds of love. There's love between friends. There's love between uh, uh, spouses. There's, there is uh, love between sisters and brothers. Uh, there's, there's love for our children, which, of course, is, is part of the point of, of Mother's Day. Uh, there, there is a different relationship there. Yet in English, we say, I love my wife, I love my dog, and I love ice cream, and use all the same word. And they obviously don't, I think, mean the same thing. Certainly hope I could say, can say that I love my wife more than I love ice cream. Even, even the outside scoops ice cream, right? Uh, you know, it, it's the same word, but it's got different shades of meaning. What they do in Greek is they just pick different words for each of those things. And so, so agape is the love that is the love of God. And it's a love that is without any kind of barrier, any kind of, um, of reservation, and so it is to be the example of what parental love and love of, of, our, of children is supposed to be. That we're supposed to love people without condition. We don't say to our children, I'll love you when you clean your room. Or I'll love you when you get your homework done. Or I'll love you when. No, we love them and that causes us to want the best for them. And that's really at the very heart of the Christian faith. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, the church, capital C, all Christians, all the denominations, we have taken this very clear, simple concept that God is love and in God there is no darkness, that God loves the world so much that God sent God's Son we take this very simple concept and then we try to explain it all in human language and we, we put all kinds of bric-a-brac around it and we put all kinds of theological words around it and we put all kinds of faith statements and creeds around it to the point that if we're not careful, we get away from the main thing. We get away from the main thing. But really all that matters is the love of God through Jesus Christ, and the rest is simply window dressing. It is simply trying to explain it. And really part of it is largely unexplainable. It's one of the reasons we call the sacrament of Holy Communion a holy mystery. God is present in and with and through the communion that we take together on Communion Sunday, and we say that and we believe it, but we cannot fully explain it. It is a holy mystery. How God's death and resurrection brings us new life, 
we try to explain, and there's some New Testament passages that give several different pictures of the atonement, and one, one this and one that, but it's all to try to explain a great miracle. And that great miracle that we continue to preach about in this Easter season and share about is that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus. And that Jesus offers us new life because God loves us. And our responsibility as Christians is then to love others. Then to love others. As Methodist Christians, we say that we're called to be perfected in love. What that means is we're called to work through the power of the Holy Spirit to work towards loving others the way God loves us. And that alone is a life work. That alone is what it takes to be a Christian, to love God, to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said those were the two great commandments, and everything else rest on these. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the way that you lead us into new life. We thank you, Lord, that you teach us about love through friendship, through parenting, through gathering together and caring about friends that we care about, through caring for our community, through loving the neighbor that is near to us and needs our help. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of love. And we thank you, Lord, that part of our faith is that experience, which is beyond mere theology, beyond mere creeds, beyond mere human faith statements. We know that you, God, love us and love this world. This is how we know we are followers of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. This time we ask you to uh, think reflectively uh, about our message and about worship today as we hear our song of reflection.
This is a time in which we would um, normally reflect uh, uh, and participate in passing offering plates, but as we continue uh, some of our uh, COVID safety pr uh, protections for some time, um, what instead we are doing is there are offering boxes out in the narthex, and so we encourage you to give your offering as you enter or leave the sanctuary on Sunday morning. For those who are participating with us online today, it's great to be with you in worship, and uh, as you give, you can continue to give uh, to the Ministry of First United Methodist Church through online giving uh, through uh, mailing in uh, your offering. We appreciate all the different ways that people give to support the ministry of the church. Uh, we appreciate the opportunities that we have to, to worship, knowing that giving is an act of worship, and it supports the ministry of our church and the ministry of United Methodists around the world. And so at this time, we'll share in hearing our offertory. As we share together in a time of uh, prayer, um, I wanted to uh, share with you uh, to keep in prayer the, the Boffman family in the loss of longtime member of our congregation, Norma Boffman, who passed away uh, this week. Uh, her funeral services will be at Overton's uh, uh, funeral home uh, this, this coming Wednesday. And so if you, you can check their website for information about that. And I believe that there's a visitation on Tuesday evening. Your prayers for, for that family or, or the Boffman family are very much appreciated. Um, also, uh, we, we want to keep in prayer everyone who might be traveling today uh, with uh, the Mother's Day holiday. I saw some really fun posts on Facebook book of people who got to get together with family this week. Uh, as they've begun to feel a little safer venturing out as they've been vaccinated, those kinds of things. And uh, uh, we encourage you uh, uh, 
uh, to, uh, to, uh, for, for your own safety and the safety of your community, I encourage you to, to get vaccinated. It's a pretty easy deal and it's getting easier all the time and it just makes it easier for us. And also so that one of these days, these can be a thing that will go into the history books again instead of having to wear them all the time. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for your love and grace that comes to us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you that we know you in relationship, not just words on a page, not just a faith statement, not just a text, but we know you because you love us and care about us through the faith of our baptism, through the faith you have, you have brought us together in. We know you love us. Help us to remember, Lord, that the most important thing we can do is share the love of God with each other and others and help them to know that no matter what their situation in life, that they are beloved people, beloved children of God. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless our church and the, our community and guide us and guide our nation and the world through this COVID-19 pandemic. It has been long, Lord, and I know many of us are weary of these days, and we look forward and pray, Lord, for the light and openness that is coming and is to come by your guidance. We pray that you would guide us and watch over us, Lord, and fill us with your presence and spirit, and bless us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time, as you feel able, if you would stand and join us in our closing song together. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All work with each other, we will work hand beside. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard human dignity and save human pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians.
Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Lord, send us forth in the spirit and power of Jesus Christ to share the love of God with others. Bless us, fill us with your spirit and your presence. Bless our community, Lord, and help us to know the love of Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Teach me your holy ways, O oh Lord, so, so I can walk in your truth. Teach me your holy ways, O oh Lord, and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. Open my eyes so I can see the wonderful things that you do. Open my heart up more and more and make me wholly devoted to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. <laughs> 